It is. Uh, it's my favorite exercise. Really? I get a lot. Yeah, because uh, when you do hip thrusters, your your extension and flexion. What do you do when you squat? Your flexion and extension. So if you get good at hip thrusters, you're gonna get good at squats. You're gonna get good at deadlifts as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean it's all all involved in bringing your your hips back and, into extension. And your glutes are the largest muscle in your body. So as an athlete, you want to be glute dominant as much as possible. Whereas you find a lot of people do squats, they're quad dominant. You know, their hips don't hinge back as the initiating movement. Technically your diaphragm's the biggest muscle in your body. Whatever. Alright. You're gonna teach me how to make jasmine rice later, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. We'll throw in some anatomy while we're at it. Cool. Sounds good. But um yeah, glute dominant. So I do love hip thrusters. some other questions you want to talk about uh, why you started wrestling or what what motivated you to take the first step in training yeah absolutely so <clears throat> growing up I was obviously a huge wrestling fan from the time I was a little kid um, two years old I got videos of me dancing in my underwear my tidy whities to uh, Shawn Michaels' theme song. Um, my family, my, my other sister would have WWE on the, or WWF at the time on the TV and uh, I just got hooked. But, you know, it was, it was a lot cooler back then, but we'll get into that after. Anyways, I grew up really loving this, the thing. Um... <laughs> never really grew out of it like everybody else I started to grow out of it but like I still tuned in every now and then um, went on to high school became a semi elite athlete um, after high school I did some acting classes I did music I started to rap for a little bit um, I just always knew that I wanted to be an entertainer. So I tried different things, but nothing really clicked for me or, or I don't know. It was just, it was just trial and error. So same thing with jobs, right? Like I, I went job to job. I did construction. My first job was at Victoria's Secret. I was folding panties at five in the morning with a bunch of women, which was an interesting job at 16 years old. My second job was at McDonald's, then I worked at Tim Hortons, um, then I worked construction, I did sales. Um, eventually, uh, I forgot a big, a huge part of this story. After high school, um, I got into kind of the wrong crowd. I started, you know, selling drugs and, you know, messing with, with, with the wrong people and living that party life. I, I did it all really kind of early, got it out of the way. But I always knew in the back of my mind that I wanted something more out of life and I didn't want that. So... I kept trying to get out of that and uh, I met this girl and she introduced a book to me called The Power of Now and The Power of Now basically long story short is a book about how nothing exists outside of the present moment the past is made up and no longer exists and the future is made up and no longer and doesn't exist that's where anxiety comes from the past is where depression stem, stems from. So this book kind of changed my life and kind of enlightened me, if you want to say that. <clears throat> so 
so again, I started trying different jobs and then I was actually helping run a poker game at a certain point. I, I got into gambling and all that kind of stuff and playing poker. And um, still I was trying to get a normal job and be a normal guy. And I got a, a rental car company job. Second week on the job, I reverse out of my driveway and I smash the rental car into my neighbor's car. And like I just got high and smoked some weed. And, and basically it was a mess. I really liked the job. I thought it was like an awesome job. And then I crashed the car and now I gotta pay for it. Fast forward, I quit the job. I have this big breakdown. And I started thinking to myself, Man, every time I do something good in my life, why does it go wrong? Why does it go wrong? Why does every time I do something good, it goes wrong? And I was just at the bottom at that point, and I had a talk with my sister and one of my good friends, my neighbors at the time. And they said to me, Joe, what do you like doing? What do you truly like doing? I said, well, I like, I like working out. Like, what else do you like doing? said, I like helping people. It, it gives me a sense of fulfillment. They're like, why don't you become a personal trainer? So I was like, okay, I'll think about it. Next day, this is how the universe works or whatever you want to call it. Next day, I get a message from my friend and he says, hey, Good Life Fitness is giving out free memberships or free one week passes. Do you want to go check it out? I said, sure, why not? We go to Good Life, we go to the front door, and it says right on the front, dro front door, hiring personal trainers. I walk in, and uh, the manager's there. I talk to him. I get the job on the spot. So I start this personal training job, and it turned out to be the best job ever. It was so fulfilling to be able to motivate and help other people and I found that that was one of my gifts, was to be able to do that. Um, and one of the moments where I figured that out was, I had a client, big fella. Um, one second, I just wanna, as I'm going through my McDonald's drive-thru, but I'm not ordering any food. Hi, right, can I get a medium black coffee, please? Uh, no, thank you. Can you just make sure it's fresh? I'm sorry, what was that? Can you just make sure the coffee is fresh? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, 195. Cool. Yeah, so big fella comes in. I said, hey, Mo, how's your day going? He says, it's going good. He said, Joe, how's your day going? I said, man, I'm dying today. And he goes... He looks at me and he goes, heroes don't die. I said, what? He said, heroes don't die. And then, and then it gave me goosebumps. Because at that moment, it sounds corny, but at that moment, I knew that that's the perspective that he viewed me in, was that I was a superhero. You know, I showed up every day and no matter what kind of day I was having, I would always show up for my clients and I would always just like, it just gave me a sense of fulfillment and I was really passionate about it. I had this one client, she was, she had Down syndrome. Literally the most joyous, best person ever. And um, people would, <laughs> did you just laugh? <laughs> no. Okay, <laughs> okay, whatever. I was moving my arm. Gotcha. Um, anyways, she was the most joyous person ever. And um, somebody came up to me one day, grabbed me on my shoulder, they're like, man, you're a superhero. You're a su superhero. So it happened on more than one occasion. Hey, how you doing? Good, cool. $20 bill for you. Here you go. So, I got that reaction on multiple occasions. Um, a few weeks later, 
one of the worst things happens to me in my life. And uh, my father had a... Thank you. Uh, my dad had a stroke. It's the worst day of my life. I stayed up all night at the hospital. I was crying. And, um... Hi, I'm sorry. Could you go straight up? Yeah, no problem. And, uh... I still had to show up to work the next day. So I show up to work. What happens? Um, WWE superstars walk in. What was his name? Dax or something? Dax Hardwood? What was his name at the time? Fucking... Uh, bald guy with the mustache. He was in a, the tag team. Elias walked in. Dana Brooke. Sheamus. So they're all there, and like I've been a WWE fan my whole life. So I'm like, wow, that's this is pretty cool, man. Like, what are they doing here? So, you know, I started talking to him, the the bald guy with the Dax Hardwood, I think that's his name. Um, we just start talking. He takes like 30 minutes out of his workout to to talk to me, and you know, I asked him, how do I get into wrestling? Because at that time, yes, I was feeling a fulfillment from personal training and inspiring people, but I didn't really like having to write programs. I wasn't passionate about doing all that kind of stuff. So I was asking and inquiring about wrestling, and he said at the end of the conversation, hey, maybe I'll see you down the line, somewhere down the line. And uh, I'll leave you tickets at the front desk. So he leaves me tickets at the front desk to the show. I go to the show later um, that day. And then uh, a week later, I give in my two weeks notice. I quit my job. I go straight to Santino Morella, AKA Anthony Corelli's gym, Battle Arts Academy in Mississauga, which is where I live, where I'm from. It's only 10 minutes down the road from me, which is such a convenience. Most people have to travel hours to find a wrestling school, but mine is right in my neighborhood. And uh, I go there, I sign up, and uh, first week, we're doing drop kicks in class. And I'm like, hey, I've been watching this my whole life. I can do a drop kick. I do a drop kick and I fucking, you're supposed to land on your hands. I went head first and I was concussed. I woke up, the guy said, hey man, what month are we in? And then when I couldn't answer that, I just felt sick to my stomach because I was like, okay, I'm fucked. Spent the whole night in the hospital. Bounced back right away though. Right away, like I... I was so excited and eager to progress. Um, and this is where the greatest quote of all time comes in. My favorite quote in life is from Rocky. Life in all sunshine and rainbows. It's a mean and nasty place and it'll beat you down to your knees if you let it. But it's not about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. So I kind of lived my life with that motto. And uh, up until then, that was pretty much my life. So I kept going. Um, my dad got healthy. I started training, getting huge, going to practice every week. Fast forward nine months later, I'm working as an extra in Toronto at SummerSlam 2019 or 18 2019 SummerSlam I buy two fresh suits I'm looking jacked I walk in I'm, I'm shaking hands with everybody I'm, I'm I'm meeting people and it was just such a great experience you know Triple H walked by me and he kind of gave me the double neck break and he, he's like, 
okay, who, who's this kid? And, uh, you know, had a couple good interactions with Shane McMahon, um, Ric Flair, Bret Hart. Um, what was the... But the main interaction was with the guy from the gym. So I see him in catering, and he sees me, and I go, hey, man, do you remember me? And he goes, you're the kid from the gym. I said, yeah. And it was just such a full circle moment for me. I got to have a, a great uh, match before. It was a trial, kind of a trial match before SmackDown. Shane McMahon, Roman Reigns, Samoa Joe sitting ringside along with the producers. I finished the match and uh, Scott Armstrong pulls me aside and he goes, hey man, I'd like to talk to you after you get dressed. And at that point, I was like, fuck, I'm getting signed. I'm getting signed. I was so happy. And uh, I get dressed. I talk to him. He asks me how long I've been working. I tell him I'm, I've been working for about eight. Yeah, thank you so much. I say I've been working for about eight months. He goes, okay, you're, you're fairly green, and that's good. You know... Where are you training? I'm training with Santino. He said, okay, keep doing what you're doing. We want you to keep us updated with your progress. And anytime we're in town, we want you to work with us. Or nearby. Awesome. Great momentum. I have a match about two months later with Shad Gaspard and JTG. Both OVW alumni and and WWE, former WWE superstars. Um, Shad, I was having the worst day of my life that day. Not the worst day, but I was having a bad day. Going through with, you know, a girlfriend or whatever at the time. Man, he comes up to me. He goes, hey man, you know what you are? I said, hold up, I, I'm going to send you something. He texts me, Wikipedia, the definition of what tall, dark, and handsome is. And he says, you know that tall, dark, and handsome has been the woman's ideal from the beginning of time? So, like, he was just kind of reminding me of who I was and to, like, pick my head up and not be, you know, down about a girl or whatever it was I was going through. And, like, he spent the next nine hours literally teaching me things about wrestling, telling me stories, and just being a big brother to me. And that meant the world. That meant the world to me. And uh, we wrestled that night, had a good match. After the match, I was like, man, I got to break up with my girl. I, I, uh, I started crying. And he hugged me. And he's like, J- he told JTG to close the door. He said, like, close the door, man. Like, he didn't want any of the other wrestlers or, or people to see me in that state. You know, like, he wanted to protect me. And um, after the show, he's like, hey, man, come come out for dinner. Let's go. Let's go eat. And, like, he didn't have to do that. I was just some new green-ass kid in the business, and, and he was going out of his way to do that. And then, like, five months later, um, you know, the tragedy happens. He goes, uh, he was on Venice Beach with his, his little boy. They're both in the water. The water takes them out. And, uh, you know, the lifeguards saved his son, but they weren't able to save him. And uh, he kind of, he died a hero. But I remember that day, like, I saw a post. Like, Shad Gaspard's gone missing. And I, and I know he's kind of like, he's a bit of a joker. And uh, I texted him. I was like, hey, man, I, I hope this is some kind of funny joke, man. And then, like, later we got the confirmation that it wasn't. So that kind of really fucked with me. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was really tough. It was a big loss for the wrestling community. And then right after that, the pandemic happened. So now I'm just lost. I'm, I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know if the world's going to restart again. Um, I don't know if I'll ever wrestle again. And basically, you know, 
uh, I took the pandemic as a, a time to really kind of find myself and I, I went on a 10 day fast which was like a really spiritually enlightening experience but you know that happens the pandemic happens we don't know what's going to happen um Things, after a year and a half or two years, things start to slowly open up. I get into car sales. You know, I, I, I figured I, I need to pick my career. I get into car sales, I start selling cars. My first month selling cars, I sold 25 cars. I was the top salesman of the month. Second month, I sold 23. I was top salesman again. Third month, I sold about 17. And then fourth month, we had no cars on the lot. We were going through a time and a period in the car industry where there were no, there was a huge shortage in cars. So now I was just sitting at the dealership twiddling my fingers all day, not really making money. Um, so I figured, you know what, man, even, even with all the money that I'm making here, which by the way, was a very lucrative, the car industry is a very lucrative, business and uh, I made so much money in that three months um, <clears throat> I said even with all the money this is not what I want to do like I'm going to finish <laughs> I don't even want to say I want to finish my story and, and do what I want to do with my life and the reason why I started professional wrestling was to be that superhero, was to inspire young kids and, and men and women in the world, like not only just young kids, but people to strive and, and do what they want in this life. You know, you only live one life. Which life are you waiting for to do the things that you want to do? Which life are you waiting for to marry the person that you want to marry? Which life are you waiting for to buy the car that you want? So, I figured out my purpose in this in this life. And, and that's to inspire. And um, so that's what I wanted to do. So I took the money that I saved from selling cars and I... Uh, I asked Anthony, I said, hey, what's the next step for me? What is the next step for Joe Mack? And he goes, why don't you try OVW? It went too hot. Um, try OVW. So with no questions asked, I picked my shit up. I left my family behind. I left everything behind. And I went to Louisville, I drove down 13 hours to Louisville, Kentucky, from Canada, not knowing a, a person. Came down to Louisville, Kentucky with my buddy, Matt Black, who's also a wrestler from Battle Arts. We came down and, uh, and then it was a wrap from there. You know, I originally came to, to just train with Al Snow for a few months. I had only budgeted for three months. Two months in, they go, hey, we want to cast you for a Netflix docuseries. Would you be interested in staying? I said, fuck yeah. Like, how can I say no to something like that? You know? So, basically, I end up staying. Um, you know, I'm fortunate and so blessed to have parents that love me so much and, like, you know, my parents support my dreams, so, like, my dad helped me out, and uh, I got to stay longer, had the best summer of my life, I grew so much, although I was injured, I was messed up, I tore my hamstring completely, my low back was messed up, but every day, there was one thing that stayed consistent, that kept me going through that whole thing, that was my relationship with God. Every day I would get on my knees and I would ask God if I was doing the right things, if I should turn back home and just go home and if this was all worth it. And, you know, he would give me the answers. And you never understand. Hmm. You never.
never understand what you're going through until later on. So, looking back at a 2019 young Joe, he would have thought, oh, I should have been signed. I should have been this. I should have been that. But fast forward to 2022, I realized that the timing wasn't right and that you have to trust in the process and have faith in something. Have faith in God and have faith in yourself that his plan is going to work out at the perfect timing. You know, so like I didn't understand in 2019. I said, I, I should have a trial by now. But in 2022, I realized that I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. So, you know, the main lesson that I learned was to achieve your goals in life, you need to do these two things. These two things will allow you to achieve anything in life. Align yourself with God and align yourself with your goals. So how do you align yourself with God? You align yourself with your higher self. And what does that higher self look like? Be a good person. Be compassionate. Be empathetic. Be loving. How do you treat your family? How do you treat your body? Are you out, you know, doing the wrong things every night? Pray to God every day. Do good. And then align yourself with your goal. If you want to be a professional baseball player, do you think that going out and drinking and doing drugs and having sex with different girls every night and and eating like shit is going to help you get to your goals? No, those are all things that are going to hold you back. So you have to align yourself with the person that you want to become. Wake up early, train hard, recover, sacrifice the things that are necessary to sacrifice in order to achieve your goals. But at the end of the day, they're not sacrifices if you truly love what you're doing and where you're going in life. So, <clears throat> went off track there, but ended up at OVW, shooting the Netflix series, amazing things happen. Ended up main eventing the big one with Al Snow, my coach, which was a huge honor for me and uh, really changed my life. And uh, I went back home for six months, and man, I just, all I could think about for that six months was, I can't wait to get back to OVW, or, you know, I want to take that next step, I want to go to the WWE. Six months go goes by, and uh, I come back to OVW, and here I am today, doing my thing, having a coffee with the Pump Action Pimp. So yeah, there you have it.